they put the characters against each other, especially mm -hmm. in our storyline, right? It was like, one person's like this, one person's like this. And it's so easy to slip up when you've been asked the same thing a million times. It's like, all right, all right. clearly you want me to give you something else. So let's get, let's get over this and here you go. Here's something that I think you'll like, right? Lesson eight, you will mess up. Excuse me? See, look. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's perfect. <laughs> this lesson is really more of a reminder. Listen, no matter how perfectly you navigate the interview process, no matter how precisely you apply these lessons, you will mess up at some point. That's because the person who holds ultimate power in this process is the editor, who can make it seem as if you said something you never said. Though the strategies here will help protect you, it's still important to come to terms with the fact that you are not the final decision maker, and that's okay. Miles, I'd love to hear about an experience you had um, where no matter how well you or someone else did in an interview, yeah. those things that were said in an interview were taken out of context to make it appear as if that person or you was saying something that was never said. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I had a really salient example of this when I shared about depression with my partner. Mm -hmm. um, I was kind of timid about sharing it at the moment that I shared it. Mm -hmm. um, I know there's an important conversation to have like with with her, and so didn't want to necessarily have it in day four or five of mm -hmm. us meeting. I uh, didn't want to have it necessarily with cameras present. However, um, it was something that, that, that producers encouraged me to have that conversation. And I was like, all right, fine, we'll do it. It could not have been a better received conversation in reality. Mm -hmm. um, she was very empathetic. She was very understanding. She was said all the right things, but more importantly, like I felt heard and seen. Mm -hmm. And it didn't feel as if it was inauthentic or that she saw me differently or that was a a deal breaker in any way for her. Um, our conversations every moment after that were very positive and she was very intentional about supporting me in that process. Um, but the way that it was shown on TV was the exact opposite. Um, it was portrayed as if my mental health diagnosis was a red flag and that the the way that, I, that me sharing that was making me like less masculine um, and in her eyes. In her eyes, yeah, right, yeah, in yeah. her eyes. And that that was something that she didn't want or like, and that's not who she is, that's not her character. And it was really unfortunate to to experience after the show because one, just seeing the hurt and that that put on her, but mm -hmm. then also like my family's watching this, my friends are watching this, my students are watching this, random strangers are watching this. And like, you hear that from somebody and especially in this climate and cancel culture, like you're like, oh, that person's a bad person. Mm -hmm. And we were constantly fighting against that, right? Mm -hmm. We were constantly fighting against like, this is not who she is. Mm -hmm. um, and that was challenging. It put a strain on our relationship. It put a strain on um, relationships that had not formed yet, that were actually meaningful ones with people that were close to me. And then also just continuing to, to, be perceived by folks that do not know us, but like, that's who she is. Um, and then conversely for me, it was like, why would you be with somebody who feels that way about you, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and so that was a really interesting, uh, or very difficult, I'm sorry, very difficult experience for us to navigate. Absolutely. So yeah, I'd love to like, just think about and explore with um, everyone the mechanics of at what went into that moment yeah. and what made it possible for production to do that. I think this is important both for people who are trying to be on reality, reality TV to know about, but also for viewers, obviously, yeah. right? Um, so in that moment when you're filming with your partner, yeah. we have two cameras in the space, yeah. right? Which means that we can cut between from one camera to another, and we can jump in time while still implying that it's one continuous moment, yeah. right? That's one thing that happens. One is a wide shot, one might be on a single individual, right? Mm -hmm. And it becomes very easy to just jump from one to the other. Right. That's one thing. And then what gives really maximum 
flexibility and leverage is the fact that they have hours and hours and hours of footage of us talking often about very like vulnerable, difficult topics, right? Mm -hmm. And often answering questions that have been asked to us dozens, even hundreds of times, right? That we get tired of and it's so easy to slip up when you've been asked the same thing a million times. And it's like, oh, all right, clearly you want me to give you something else. So let's get, let's get over this and here you go. Here's something that I think you'll like, right? Mm -hmm. um, but then that could be used against you. So in this context, you're delivering you're, you know, you're, you're being vulnerable in this moment. Your partner is receive, is being empathetic, yep. is receiving you as you wish to be received. Yep. Um, and instead of showing that, they have all of these hours of footage of her interviewing, and they're able to show the image of you and her in space. And over that, overdubbed over that, yep. It, we have audio of Frankenbits, which we've talked about in the past, right? Which are, are pieced together moments from many different interviews, mm -hmm. which are strung together to make it seem as if she is saying something that, in fact, she never said, yeah. right? And this is, she probably nailed her interviews, yeah. right? She probably did great. Yeah. And there's nothing that could have been done to avoid that situation, Certainly. right? Because inevitably they ha they have whatever narrative they want to build, they can build. They can build, right? I think the unfortunate part about this one was one, it was a very meaningful, like a very meaningful moment mm -hmm. for us. It was a very vulnerable moment for me. Mm -hmm. And this this specific thing never came up in our storyline again, mm -hmm. right? So it was like you didn't even have to edit it this way. Mm -hmm. um, but by doing that change the trajectory of our story, mm. right? So now she's villainized mm -hmm. and like, it's like, oh, what's wrong What's wrong with her, right? Um, which put me in a different step, cause I think that they, that they put the characters against each other, especially mm -hmm. in our storyline, right? It was like, one person's like this, one person's like this. And then, oh, this since since she's not liking him the, and this guy looks so great, why doesn't, why doesn't she like this guy? Oh, it's like, oh, something must be wrong with her, mm -hmm. right? And that's mm -hmm. not, true or mm -hmm. uh that's not true one and then two it's like it wasn't necessary mm -hmm. and it wasn't kind right like it was mm -hmm. not kind to her or to me to be able to mm -hmm. use the our language against us in that way mm -hmm. and also for it not to be like full circle on the opposite end being like corrected you know um, <laughs> yeah using the you using franken bits <laughs> for to have her say like, oh, I had issues with this, but in fact, you I, know, know, I don't. Yeah, right. yeah. <laughs> like it was never rectified. Yeah, that, yeah. that was an ugly yeah. feeling. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah. Why don't we just experiment a little bit and see um, what our editor can do with you know a conversation we have right here? Simple. Let's let's bring it to what we're doing today. Yeah. Let's do it. Miles. Thank you so much for making that tea earlier, man. I, I've i never had a tea like it, and, and I just want to let you know, I love this tea. And I wanted to thank you. I appreciate that, man. Uh, you know, I hate taking medicine. Like, it's just gross. And so my, my dad, one of his special recipes is like this lemon tea that... Like you just put a little lemon, little tea, little honey, uh -huh. um, and whatever is going in your throat, whatever you're feeling in your like your nasal stuff, it just like all just like flushes away. And uh -huh. so I'm glad I can make it for you. You know, Miles, I've been having a great time like shooting this with you, and I just want to let you know, I love you. I appreciate that, man. Uh, you know, I hate you. You're like gross. Okay, let's talk about a few quick, simple tips for interviewing that could protect you from being edited in an unfavorable way. The first tip, and my personal favorite, my go-to, is using modulation in your voice to make it harder for them to splice sentences together in a way that makes it seem as if you said something you didn't. So for example, ending each sentence in a way that makes it clear that the sentence is ending is helpful. What is not helpful is talking like me and sounding like this all of the time. 
Yeah, that's real. That may that does that's make it how easier. I talk yeah, all of the time. But the more variation you put into your voice that connects the parts of a sentence together, it makes it harder for them to put that sentence with another one. We've talked about this tip a lot, but it's worth bringing up again. You can always break the fourth wall as long as you're doing it in a friendly, amicable, non-confrontational fashion. By pointing back to the cameras, laughing about it, saying, isn't this ridiculous? You're giving yourself space from the cameras and you're also giving them material that chances are they won't want to use. So when you're in these uncomfortable interview scenarios, you can be playful, point back, say, ha ha, why are you doing this to me right now? You know? For our activity, let's go back to your answers from lesson one and practice delivering those statements aloud while using dramatic modulation and performatively breaking the fourth wall, all while having a good time. What is the main reason you're pursuing this experience? What may be an ulterior motive that you wouldn't initially share with someone? What is the ideal outcome from this experience? What are some potential drawbacks that this whole experience may bring? In our next lesson, we'll talk about one of the most important parts of the entire process, finding the joy.